Deborah will be coming in a little bit. And let me see, am I live yet? Ah. Did you see me up? That's so bizarre. Because <laughs> I'm not it seeing. Might be on a delay or something. Is it on the delay? That's so weird. Hold on. All right, I see myself now. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, that's technology for you. And uh, and that's what we're going to talk about. Thank you. We're going to be talking about technology. And yeah, as you can see, I am not super proficient. And that's why I'm trying to gather all the information I can. So when the year starts again, and chances are we will be using a lot of technology again, that I'm going to be ready. Before I start, I'd like to set the purpose of this um, of these little meetings. And the purpose is teamwork. And uh, to, for us to learn and reflect and for us to be prepared to teach when the year starts. And I was just thinking about this. This is summer. We're on vacation in case people are watching and don't know. And here we are doing broadcasts and talking to teachers and preparing. So I don't know any other jobs that people go on vacation and all they do is think about their job and how they're going to do it better when they come back. But anyway, this is us. This is teachers in case you're not sure what we do. You know, that's what we do. And the norms are, we are here to share, learn, and care. So we're going to be respectful. We're going to be patient. We're going to be supportive. And rule number two, let's keep it positive. And let's try to find solutions and inspiration. And with that, I'd like to welcome uh, Deborah. You know, I met Deborah recently. She came to one of my broadcasts. And she uh, agreed to come back since she knows some technology, she agrees to come back and show us, give us a little tour on some uh, programs. So here she is. Ta -da! Hello. <laughs> Hello. Well, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Deborah Barnes, and I teach fifth grade in Oregon. Um, I just recently moved to Oregon, so most of my teaching experience is in Arizona. <clears throat> and um, the last few years have been um, teaching native students on the reservations, both in Arizona and Oregon. So um, gifted education is my background, um, but I'm just a teacher that uses tools. So um, <laughs> we're gonna play a little bit with Class Dojo today and um, hopefully answer some questions mm -hmm. to get you started. Sounds great, sounds great. And I have some friends of mine on the chat Hello, equipe. Hello, Macrinho. Hola, hola. And uh, today we're going to be doing some educational, um, it's an educational um, live stream. Oh, and here's Irma Gomez. Good morning, ladies. Thank you for this presentation. Thank you, Irma. Thank you for being here. And um, let's see, um, following it, my stream. Okay, DJ Jerry's here saying hello to everybody. And so I'm not sure if more people will be um, joining as we go along, but maybe we'll just continue and, um, and see what happens. <laughs> oh, Miss Pradell's here. She's an amazing dance teacher. Thank you so much for being here. She's very dedicated and amazing. She would, uh, awesome. you guys have this kind of programs uh, there, Deborah, where you have uh, itinerant dance and art teachers coming in. Oh, my school is so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did in Arizona. We had an opening minds through the arts program. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we had to have every component um, in each school or in a cluster of schools and then they would rotate. But um, Oregon, I haven't seen that quite so much. So yeah, that, my school is so lucky. We always had programs, and we had Miss Pradell for many years, and she's amazing. She this year we was in another school, but she kept supporting us and sending us videos to show the kids, and she's been so supportive of my live streams, and I really appreciate. Thank you so much, Miss Pradell. Nice. Very cool. All right, go ahead, Deborah. Let's let's go ahead and get started and um, see what happens. Okay. So so Class Dojo actually has their own little professional development um, video and kind of follow through. So um, I'm going to see if that goes. Um, and then I'll try to show you a little bit of mine. Um, I am not able to make a fake class. I thought I could, but 
um, it assigns those kids to my school and becomes a big mess. So, um, <laughs> so I can't, I can't do that. Have, you know what I mean? Julia yeah. Robert, Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, class dojo can be individual. So you don't have your, I know that um, what LAUSD is gone full class dojo, but um, if you're not in that district, you can still do class dojo without any other teachers at your school being on class dojo. Um, and then the more that you get, then they will contact you and ask you if you want to help bring other teachers in and have a class because class dojo can also be a school used initiative. And there, there's a, they call it stories, which is kind of like Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. So you can put out pictures and videos and, and all the parents will get it at the same time. So there's also something called school stories. So if our administrator or whatever teachers designated to do that, um, they can put something out to the whole school and not just their classroom. Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of talk about that here in just a second. So I'm gonna try to share my screen. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting that you pointed this out, Deborah, because I have people from other countries that watch the broadcast later. Sometimes they're not here in the live stream, but they do watch it on playback and it's good for them to perhaps they okay. can access from other places like that so okay so i am oh let me put it up sorry there we go okay so you should see something that says what is class dojo yes correct oh, okay <laughs> all right <clears throat> so um it can be used on a phone it's an app so it can be on an iPhone. Um, I'm pretty sure that they have an Android application, but I don't use Android, so I'm not sure. Um, but you can have it on a tablet. Um, some teachers project their class dojo screen up in their classroom um, mm -hmm. and, and kids can see everything that's going on, whereas some school districts don't allow that. Um, I never showed the points up in front of the whole class. Um, but I left the sound on because when you give a student a point, um, it makes this bing kind of sound. And if you take a point away, which some years I did and some I didn't, it'll make a eh, eh. And then I'd say, oh, I hope that wasn't you. And it would <laughs> it would kind of keep everybody on the same page. So um, you keep them on their toes. It does. All right. So. <laughs> This is what um, your classroom would look like. So they've given me, I'm in here as a student, um, and then you are allowed to um, add students to the class. And so, um, oh, I have to okay, so um, if you add a student and then you save, then they go on the screen. Um, there are different options all over the screen. So this is what your main Class Dojo screen will look like. Um, I am the Barnes Beehive. So when I'm logged in, I have my little hive up here with my little bees. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you can invite parents right from this setup. And when you do that, um, you are entering in their email or their phone number to invite them or you can download the parent invites and send them in paper. Um, sometimes I do both. The codes that are on the page, and I don't know, let's see if it'll let me do this. Okay, cool. Um, so the codes that are on the, the page, oh, wait, there we go. They, um, they tell, they walk the parent through exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. um, you print them, you send them home, they connect. So the next page is, would be what my parent would get. So to Deborah Barnes and Deborah Barnes' parent, um, please join our classroom. And then this code that's right down here um, is specific just to me. So when they log in, they use that code and then they can only see their child information um, and their their students class stuff they can't see any other kids mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah might have been a problem right so <clears throat> I send it um, 
I actually hold the paper ones until open house um, and give them just to the kids who haven't signed up yet. So um, when you are on here, it tells you on this circle here, it tells you how many are connected in your classroom. So mm -hmm. I have zero of two families if I'm just myself and Celine. So, you know, it, it, uh, that's kind of, I don't know, part of the issue, but it, I still don't get a hundred percent of parents. You're, I, there are some families and some classrooms that do. And it was really interesting how many classrooms reported a hundred percent once we went into distance learning, because I think parents really understood the importance of communicating with their teachers. Mm -hmm. And um, that we had a lot more hundred percent after distance learning than we did before. So basically, so basically one cold. It's not like the kids have an account and the parents have an account. It's just one account for the parents and the students. Is that what it is? So parents have an account, but students can too, um, depending on the grade level. Okay. So here's the student login and there are login instructions because students can have a portfolio and mm -hmm. If you set them up, especially for you being preschool, if you set them up with a portfolio and you're in a school that has Class Dojo for all their grades, then um, at the end of the year, you um, you pass those kids on to the next grade. So the next year's teacher, when they're building their class, those students are already in the system. Mm -hmm. So preschool, you're gonna be building the system and then each grade, they'll just be pulling those kids out of the database already. And that portfolio will follow them every year. I see. I see. So um, the class instructions, you do have to have parent consent. Um, and so um, there is a, a whole help desk page that gives you information about the form and it's over here and it can be printed in multiple languages. And again, I got to that by um, by clicking on the student login and then show class instructions. Then I get this message right away that says I have to have permission. And you click on the parent consent, it takes you to the help screen. Or if you say, I agree, then it just takes you right in. So um, how are your students gonna log in? Um, some teachers print this QR code and a QR code can be used with your camera. And it's a spe special code that takes you to a website. Um, so this code takes them to their portfolio on Class Dojo or to their area. Um, they can also sign in with Google or you can just have a text message um, around. So this would be the QR code for our class. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, so the, it gives the instructions, teachers print this out and put that on their wall all over their classroom. Um, you could copy and paste this and put it, um, in your Google classroom or on your newsletter or, um, your social media page for your class. Um, however you're doing that so that kids could print, uh, or scan this and be able to get into their, their so, area. Deborah, each student have their own code or is it one code that once they, they scan it, they are in the program and then they sign in into their specific accounts? So once they go into this, it's mm -hmm. going to ask them to log in. So they're going to say, I'm a student. And then they're going to have to tell the system which student they are. They're going to get a list of the names in their classroom. I see. Um, down here at the bottom, it says download individual student QR codes. So... Um, it says treat the instructions like passwords. Students will not be able to log in or see other students' accounts. And if I click on here and say get the printout, then again, I'm going to get the same thing. But now this just goes to my student page. If I'm a student, these are my instructions. And then these are your instructions if you're in my class. Oh, neat. OK, very, very good. OK. Um, I have not used portfolios. Um, portfolios just came out um, recently, probably within the last two years. And um, so I did not have an opportunity to, to use them um, yet. So um, 
my school was not a one-to-one -one district until distance learning. So everybody's kind of scrambling. So mm -hmm. <coughs> um, <laughs> yeah, welcome. <laughs> up here under the options, you can edit your class, meaning that you can add students. And then this is where all of our other pieces are. So um, this class name is called PD session, but mine is always Barnes Beehive. And then I put the year. So last year's class was Barnes Beehive 1920. Um, and then you can choose the grade however you need to do that. Then it'll have a list of all of your parents and all of your students for that matter under these two tabs. Mm -hmm. And then skills, this is where you get to have a little bit of fun with your class because um, this is these are the skills you're looking for in them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the six that are here are the ones that Class Dojo preloads for you, but you can change that. You can edit any of these skills. Um, and then it tells you that they're worth a point and I change those. So you can change all of the skills, you can change the icons and you can change the number of points that they're worth. Five points is the max, mm -hmm. um, but for helping others, I make that three. Um, I leave most everything else at one, but I put kindness as a three because um, that's something I really wanna promote. And so it has to be, it has, I have to be told by another student. So um, it it can't be, oh, hey, I, I just helped them. Did you see that? You know, it has to be the other child has to come to me and say, oh, did you see that Johnny just helped me when I dropped my books or something? And then oh, I'll wow. give that student the points. But you can work it however you want. And then needs work. Um, those, there's usually some that are preloaded, um, but <clears throat> those for me are pretty small and a lot of teachers actually don't even use that. They only want the positive and with um, positive behavior intervention support with the PBIS is really strong in most schools that they only want the positive because if you mark a needs work, it removes a point. So um, that's, but that's personal preference or however your district works. Um, and you can add skills for that. Um, my needs work typically was just homework based. So either they forgot their homework um, or they they got in a fight or something like that. So like I do extremes. So my negatives um, are for um, if I need to contact the parent. So um, down here it says choose which points you'd like the parents to see. Parents don't have to see points at all. Um, you can use that just for your own classroom. Um, in my previous schools, the preschool, first, preschool, kinder, first, second, all shared points with families. They'd sent all their points home. Um, but in the middle elementary grades and upward, they did not. So it, but that's, you know, like I said, it's all personal preference. And you could send, just give them positive points. You know, I think some of our kids get enough negativity at home. So we tend to, only want to share the good stuff about school, so they get positive points only. Mm -hmm. um, it is an all or nothing, so it can't be, oh, I only want to send negative points to George, you know, but everybody else, was, like, you can't do that. So it's it's either your whole class or nobody. So um, I teach fifth grade, I don't send points home. Um, sometimes I do for like the first quarter, and mm -hmm. then I take those off. Once parents see a pattern, then I take it away and then I just let them know that they can call and ask me anytime if they want to know what points. Um, points for distance learning, I changed them to did they attend a Zoom meeting and then they get points for that. Mm -hmm. um, they um, attend something, you know, did they turn in their homework? Did they participate in this activity? Did they send a little video showing me what they were doing at home for PE? Um, and if they did, then I sent a sticker home in their packet because oh, we had packets going every um, every Monday, mm -hmm. and so um, I would try to send a goodie in their in their package that was going home on Monday, depending mm -hmm. on how their week went. So um, I always do points 
go Monday to Thursday so that I have that Friday to be able to get stuff together. Mm -hmm. um, but that was how I helped it with distance learning. So um, the teacher tab lets you know what other teachers at your school are signed up. So these are Dr. Tapos, our principal slash superintendent, and then Ms. Hess is our PE teacher, and Ms. Guilford teaches third grade, and Ms. Arnold taught second, and now she's our literacy coach. So um, those are the, we are the five at my school right now. Um, and more on this year, I think we're gonna probably- And Deborah, when we it said something, I think it's invite, you can invite those teachers, is that what the- Yes. So and then, how would they be able to see or they can just post or would they be able to see the students work or how does that work? So um, this particular page is you're inviting them to be a co-teacher in your own class. Uh -huh. So I, Miss Huss is our PE teacher. So I invited her to be a co-teacher. Mm -hmm. That way she can give points in my classroom. But so can you see the work also of the students or she has? Yes. Yeah, um, it gives them full access to your class. Um, they cannot post on a story, I don't think. Um, but it does. But then the skills that we were working on, then she has access to those as well. I see. Um, so, and then for settings. Um, it says allow comments in your class story. So class story again is like Facebook and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. Mm -hmm. And portfolio posts and I turn that on, I let them comment. Um, and cause you have the ability to delete comments if you need to, but I've never had a problem with that. Um, and then these two, you don't have a choice. Parents and co-teachers, it's, they can comment on anything. Um, but I don't allow students to comment <clears throat> from their login. I don't allow them to comment on class story posts. So, um, but that's just me. I have fifth graders. So, yeah, I would, I would, yeah, I would agree that. with that on the fifth graders. And, uh, Deborah, not just uh, to pause for one second, I mm -hmm. have uh, uh, Ms. Pradell uh, talking about certain things. She's talking about the points, the distance learning. She, okay. she, likes, she thinks it's a good idea to give points, like she, like for example, first to, to post, kind uh -huh. of to get them motivated to start posting you know, more and things like that. That sounds like a good idea. And before she had a comment about the portfolios, I even put it on the on the screen so I wouldn't forget. So she was saying how she could see, you know, the kids' videos and work through the portfolios. And I think we're gonna get to the portfolios. I just didn't want to forget about that and wanted to. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah por you know, portfolios, I was on the beta tester group for portfolios and I was kind of sorry I couldn't um, use them later, but, um, what they want is they want kids to take pictures of their work, you know, that, that they're doing and be able to provide that in a portfolio format for, um, for parents, you know, or for family members to be able to see. Um, the, the difficulty that, oh, sorry, my cats are fighting. Um, the, the difficulty is that if they're on a Chromebook, they have to take their work and then hold the computer over to be able to use the camera or figure out a way mm -hmm. to hold their work in front of their body and then try to use the camera. So sometimes that takes a little bit of skill. Um, mm -hmm. There is a way for them to be logged into their student account um, on, a, on a phone. Um, they just have to switch the user on their parent's device and then they can take pictures and submit them that way. So. Um, sometimes that just gets to be a little bit tricky. And unfortunately, I don't know all the ins and outs of that just because I haven't been able to use it. So mm -hmm. before we go to portfolios, I want to show you the other really cool parts of this screen. And you're going to spend most of your time on this screen. And that's this line here at the bottom. Uh -huh. It gives you a constant reminder of how many parents, the percentage of parents that you have signed up. And then you have these other buttons. So there's the toolkit. So it comes with a timer and with preset times, or you can add your own. So if you want the timer to be for 15 seconds, then um, it will go ahead and it will do that. Um, and then random, oh, I guess those aren't working in here. 
Um, this is a um, partners maker. Oh, actually, no, sorry. Random is, um, oh, everybody's doing such a great job. I'm gonna let the computer pick someone. And it will choose one student randomly out of all of the kids. So it could be um, instead of popsicle sticks to draw names, if you mm -hmm. do that for um, making sure that you have equity in your class, um, random will do that. Mm -hmm. um, group maker is fantastic because um, my kids always think that I'm putting certain kids together because I don't want them with, to be with their friends. <laughs> so group You're not doing that. <laughs> uh, group maker takes me out of that. So group may now it doesn't always do the groups I want, but you know, you just kind of deal with it. But group maker does um, put groups together. So um, it will choose and you can decide um, what size group you want. Oh, it has a new option. Don't group together. So it'll take you can put in which kids you don't want to be in the same group. Oh, that's, that's new. Um, so you can put how many kids you want the group, and then it will choose those groups for you, which is really nice because then it takes me out of the equation. Uh -huh. um, Noisemaker, um, when you click on that in the classroom setting, um, it will tell you how loud your room is. And so you can set it to um, how you want that to be. And sometimes I use that for points, depending on what we're doing, if it's an extremely loud day or if it's supposed to be quiet. If they're doing independent, silent reading, then I set the noise meter so that um, we can kind of keep track. But you do have to do it a lot because kids will sit and just stare at the noise maker rather than doing what they're supposed to be doing. So. Um, it is definitely a skill that has to be practiced. So that's it. Yeah. So how does it like the noise kind of, um, has like a, if the noise surpass the one you set, then you hear like a sound or how does that tell you that you know, the noise has been? I don't remember and it's okay. not um, working on here. So. Okay. Just one. Sure. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Let's directions. <laughs> um, directions are that you can put simple step directions, and then they'll be projected on your screen. Um, if you want, it's a new direction, so it's the activity name, you have to add an item of some kind, and then you're starting it now, it'll project the directions up on your screen. So kind of like a, a whiteboard-ish kind of thing. That's so interesting, yeah. they can use it on Zoom, right? They can put it on their screen on Zoom, the directions yes. up, so that sounds and good. Because this says new, it's because there aren't any in there, but you can save them. Mm -hmm. And then if you use the same ones over and over, then you can keep those in there. Um, think pair share is you can put up a question and have your students discuss them. So they have some that are in there all the time and then you can create your own question if you want. Um, sometimes teachers will do that for morning work. Um, that they'll post oh, well, when you click on it, it goes up on the, it makes a, like a whiteboard thing and it um, says to discuss it with a partner, so. Would they be answering on paper or would they have their argument if they can answer on their device or? Um, <clears throat> for Class Dojo, I think you would have to decide how you want that. Um, if it's distance learning related, then um, Maybe they're just answering that and um, and sending you a note or something, but sending a message to you in Class Dojo. Um, <clears throat> because that's something you could use for on Zoom also then. You could put the questions, they could type, and then you could have another device where you're you know, looking yes. at what they're saying or something like that. Well, they could type it into chat on Zoom, you know, depending, like if you have a parent that can type for your kids, I don't know how fast yours are, but my yeah, kids are yeah. Yeah. And, and in this moment, I'm thinking more like older kids, because yeah, my kids, they wouldn't be yeah. able to read the question or some kind of just like in general, like a child that could read and write. Uh, yes. You know. Absolutely. You could have them write the question on a piece of paper and then um, answer the question and take a picture of themselves and send you the picture. Um, yeah, there's lots of different, different ways I think that you could probably do that. So, yeah. um, the today lets them know the, the date. I don't know, 
Um, it says daily announcements, a welcome message, morning work. So you could put that up and also save it for later. So kind of like the directions, but more of announcement based, not necessarily um, that there's that they have to do something, but maybe it's just a reminder message, put away your backpack or um, your morning message on Zoom could be, do you have a piece of paper? Do you have a pencil? You know, or today we're going to be um, drawing. Do you have crayons with you? That kind of thing so that they can get that started. And then music um, has a focus, has calming music or active music. So um, I don't think it works on, no, it's not going to work on this, but um, the most important thing about this is that you can't break it. So um, play, you know, log in to Class Dojo and and just kind of play around. You don't need any kids to be able to use the toolkit. Um, it helps to have students in there, obviously, to do the grouping and things like that. But if you already know some of your students for next year, put them in. You know, you don't have to send them an invitation. Um, you don't have to invite anybody to use it. So um, you can have an entire class and have no parents signed up. And you can still use Class Dojo in your classroom. So if you have names of kids, then you can start using it right away. Um, it, it says that you need to put in first and last name when you put students in, but as you can see, those last names aren't displayed. So, um, you know, you can put that up, you can put that together, kind of however you are wanting it. Um, I take attendance with Class Dojo, and it is double, because I have to take attendance in our school system and in this, but, um, Green is that they're present. You can mark everybody present. You can mark everybody absent. And what I used to do for my fourth graders a couple years ago is I marked everybody absent. So it changes everybody in your class. Mm -hmm. And then as they entered the room, they marked themselves present. Then they would come up to the board and they would click on it. And if it's green, then they're there. So um, this yellow means tardy. Um, this means that they left halfway through the day, and then this one is that they're present. So they either left early or they came, like, tardy for me is just within, like, the first hour, mm -hmm. but I would use the half-day one if they came, like, after lunch or, or if they left at lunch or that kind of thing. And then you can save attendance, and when you save attendance... Um, then you can go back and you can look um, at attendance from the previous days. So um, here again, timer, random, those are in here and inside the toolkit. And then the coolest one is this big ideas link and big ideas takes you to a, another tab, but they have growth mindset videos and um, they have positive thinking. They have, um, well, there are more. Factor fiction, it looks like they've added quite a few um, on here, positive stories. And then there are um, down here, at, if you scroll to the very bottom, there's a big ideas tab. Oh, it's the same one. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> I clicked too soon. If you click on watch now, you only get the positive thinking videos. But if you scroll down, you get all their SEL, their social emotional learning videos. So, um, and on growth mindset, perseverance, empathy, gratitude, mindfulness, and moods and attitude, challenges, respect, and positive thinking. And, um, and then amazing ways to use Class Dojo. So you can also use, these are um, primarily set up for teachers, the ones here at the bottom. So um, lots of, lots of, these are great. Even my fifth graders liked watching these. Um, especially ones like empath, uh, perseverance and um, gratitude. We watched those quite a bit. So um, how long are they? They're like ten, five minutes, three minutes. Here, five minutes for all of these. Um, this first one, growth mindset, are the very first ones that they did, and mm -hmm. so they go in order. Um, your brain as a muscle is the first one. Mojo is going to leave. 
He doesn't think he can, he's as smart as everybody else. So he's going to run away. And so they talk about that. And then um, the power of yet. And then there are posters that you can print out. They'll send you a whole resource thing. And I'll show you where you can go on here too to get those. But um, all of these videos are five minutes in length. So super quick. Wouldn't take much time. You could show one in a Zoom meeting and um, share yeah, your screen. And and send the poster send packets home. You can send a poster to the kids if, if they you know, provide the posters. You're saying that they can uh, send you a kit with posters and things like that. Right. And, you know, depending on how active you are um, on Class Dojo, um, they, the company chooses um, one person per school to be a mentor depending on how active you are in the system. And so um, then that person with the mentor status trains other people at their school and goes through the same video that I'm showing you. Um, and then you can earn uh, Class Dojo swag for yourself and for your class. Um, so they send you lanyards and stickers and little uh, mojo characters. Um, and then when you're a mentor, you get access to the Google Drive for Class Dojo. And so you can download all kinds of stuff that's um, got the little mojo guy on there and um, and all and Katie and all of his friends. So um, that part's kind of fun. Um, so let me just so, ask anybody, the you know, teachers on the chat, if they have any questions so far with anything. Um, just you know, because <laughs> you know, just in case somebody uh, comes up with something, I I, I haven't uh, seen it. But um, I was thinking about the attendance. That would be really cute on Zoom, where you have your screen, and as children come, you're marking, and then maybe they know that you're only going to be doing that for the beginning of the session, so they might be motivated. I know my students would be to see their little you know monster or character up and me marking because I'm not going to stop the lesson to go back and mark. So yeah, be motivated to come on time to see so that. When, you know. when you put, when you sign up kids for a class dojo, then the system randomly picks the little monsters. Mm -hmm. um, but when kids use their login um, and to create their, or to create their own account, they get to change their monster. Oh, I was wondering. So, yeah. yeah. So um, they get to design it how they would like. Um, the ones that come up are all standard. So sometimes you might have, depending on the size of your class, I think they have like 25 or 30 different ones so that you don't get duplicates. But um, I've had some duplicates um, in my class and those kids go home and tell their parent that they want their own account so that they can change their monster so that it's different and not the same as, you know, Johnny's or whatever. I'm wondering about that, you know. So that that's great, and that's a motivation for them to want to, um, you know, to want yes. to to go into the accounts and create the accounts if they know that they can create this little um, character. And Irma yes. saying great pace presentation. Thank you, Irma Gomez. <laughs> it's always, uh, so supportive, and uh, Miss Predell still here and is asking. What's the opinion about a principal requesting to be added to your class? She's asking our opinion. For me, I would I would love. I like when principals are involved. So I would say yes. Come on down, getting you know, get in the class and uh, and put some resources there too <laughs> if you have some. <laughs> um, yeah, I I wouldn't have a problem with um, having anybody be on my class. I know that you know in the class dojo feed on Facebook and some other places that they sometimes struggle with with teachers posting some strange stuff on school story or class story. And um, I think it's really just constant communication. And we always had class dojo as part of our staff meeting. So it was just, you know, don't forget, we, you know, you kind of have to have norms for your staff too for class dojo, because it is communication um, out to families. So um, if you include the principal on your classroom, then, um, then they would be able to take a look at that and they wouldn't always be asking you, like, what are you saying? What are you telling people? So um, the three things I use, I use class story and messages. And those, since I haven't been using portfolios, um, classroom is all just what you do in your class 
And then class story is what goes out in a Facebook like feed and messages are what you can send um, directly to parents. Okay. So class yes. uh, Deborah's uh -huh. Uh, Jasmine Esparza is asking, can students see each other's work? Um, no, I don't think so. In portfolios? Or I think in general, can they see each other's work? She was just asking. Um, so, well, here, let's see. It says, get started with portfolios. Parents will love getting to see what their child is learning. Um, a place for students to complete activities and share work with you and their parents. So, no, I do not think that um, that they would be able to assign work, classwork directly to student devices. So, um, you can s create an activity. This is all new since distance learning. So, they're going to start to do this worksheet things coming. Um, they're asking for beta testers for that right now, but you can send a video response type text, video, photo, drawing, and then worksheets is coming. Um, and you can send directions and then you can assign it to your class. Mm -hmm. So this is one way that they're trying to be on the distance learning platform by having that. And I know a lot of teachers are asking for things like that. So um, I will show you where to access this. Um, this whole display when um, at the end, and then you can go through and um, kind of click on each of these things yourself and watch the videos that are in here too. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did, um, I think we're going to be posting a couple um, PDF files at the end that has, um, that's like this, that says you can have it all in one app and it's just a quick um, how to do certain things. So that yeah, I'll put it in the description of this, um you know, this uh, broadcast on the bottom, I'll put this PDFs that Deborah is uh, talking about. Now, Deborah, quick question. So you mentioned that you had the class dojo at your staff meeting. How, how did that work? Like how, what do you- well, We just, we were always a line item on that. We didn't actually bring it. We just had made sure that we were always on the agenda. So, mm -hmm. cause I was always a mentor. So if, um, so it would just be a way for me to say, is there anybody having any problems with it? Any questions? Um, are see, all your parents getting in? Because sometimes parents will say that they're having trouble getting into Class Dojo, and it's usually on their end. So, you know, it's just trying to help people through that process. Um, is there a video that tells parents how to get in? Because that's one thing that teachers brought up, to have some tutorials uh, for parents. Like, uh, how would you assess this particular thing or that thing? and have a little video. And I was wondering if there's something already available that shows parents how to do that. Really, if, if you give them this download parent invite that we did earlier, uh -huh. um, and we and you send this with them, they should not have really any trouble because it tells them um, yeah. step by step, are you new to Class Dojo? You're gonna do these four things. If they have two children or more than more than one, um, they can merge all their accounts together so they don't have to have individual accounts for every child. So they just have to add the new code, mm -hmm. but it tells them exactly, exactly step by step what to do. Um, and it always and translates also, right? I, I noticed that they have different languages and you can send the, the notes in different languages. They, they do, and that's a really cool feature. Um, so that's primarily um, in class story. Mm -hmm. So in class story, it's going to look like this. Um, and then if you have something going on in your class, um, then you can type a message, you can add a picture, a file, um, you can record straight in there. That was new this year that you can record um, and you can schedule events. So if you have Zoom meetings every Monday, you can make that an event. Um, and then it'll they'll be getting reminders. So if you could possibly put the link there, right? Yeah. Or the code for your for your Zoom meeting. So um on so this is what it would look like. Mm -hmm. So it has Mrs. Barnes and then it would have your class. So mine would say Barnes Beehive 1920 and then it would say Hello everyone. And then they have the choice to like it or comment. And that's all they have the option to. 
you have the option. I got to move this little bar here. They, you have the option to edit or delete, um, but that's because you would be the teacher. So um, they don't have the option for the other stuff. Um, you can add a photo, you can drop files, you can browse, it'll pull right from your computer um, to be able to put those. Um, you could attach work. Um, I checked with my families to see who had printers, um, if they wanted to be able to download their own paper so I wasn't having to send it home, um, then they could print out what they wanted to. Um, I read some books and I would record right in there or I would just send little morning messages um, and I would record quick little 30 second little videos. You know, parents aren't going to want to sit and watch a lot. So really the, the important thing is, is that you pick like one style of communication, one platform and you work that. I had a lot of parents that were getting frustrated, getting so much from class dojo because they didn't feel like it applied to them. They really felt like it was only for their child. And so you just kind of have to figure out what works best. So I did a little bit on Class Dojo and a little bit in email. Um, I could communicate directly with my students through email. I didn't have any of my students logged in this year because we were not one to one until distance learning. So um, we did not do portfolios. And so I didn't have that option for them on here. So I didn't use that. Um, but I used class story all the time. Um, I put, I would link the school newsletter. I would, um, when we knew food schedules during distance learning of when they could pick up lunches or when lunches were being delivered, then I would put that on class story because class story, um, was available to everyone in your class who's logged in to be able to see that, um, messages are specific text messages that are only between you and the, the person. So like you see right here, it's got the word parent at the end. So I could send out a text message to all parents. And then when the parent responds to me, it's only between me and that parent. It's not going out to the whole class. Whereas mm -hmm. class story, if they comment on my post here, it goes out to everybody. Okay. So, um, so if I sent a message to um, Deborah Barnes's parent, they have to be registered. They have to be logged. So they have to have received the invitation. They have to have accepted the invitation. And then you can send messages directly to them. Um, and they decide whether they want it to be to their phone or to their email or however they want to be communicated with. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's how that works. And you can have multiple parents. The only thing that I didn't like is you couldn't combine people. So I can't have two phone numbers for one contact. So if I was sending a message to Johnny's parents, I would have to send the message to one parent first and then copy and paste that to the other parent if I wanted the both of them to get the same message. Um, and I'm really big on making sure that you're communicating with, with especially if they're divorced, with both parents. If if the paperwork is a says that, um, just because I'm a child of divorce and I'm a divorced parent, so <laughs> I'm a stepmom. So I just really think communication is important. So um, if you're gonna if if they have joint custody, you have to send it to both. So um, that's that's the only thing I don't particularly like is that I can't click and say, oh, I want this message to go to these three people. Mm -hmm. um, all or that's individual. I have uh, there is a question here, Deborah. Uh, Ms. Pridel is asking and saying that she couldn't uh, edit text on class story. She said I couldn't edit text on class story if I had posted slides above. Any suggestions? If you had posted a picture? Yeah, I think she if she puts uh, slides above, then she couldn't edit the text that she probably had it uh, under the the slides or pictures. Do you have any suggestion for that? Or? No, because I've always been able to add text. Now, sometimes it's hidden. Are you using it on your phone or on the computer? Because unfortunately, the programs are a little different. Yes, Ms. Breda, were you on the phone or the computer? We'll wait for her to answer and then okay. we'll get back to... Uh, 
to that. But anyway, yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm wondering if they are going to be changing features if they notice that more people will be using Class Dojo. I, I was at a meeting yesterday and a lot of uh, people were very interested and told, said a lot of great things about Class Dojo. And I know that I noticed that they are, you know, making changes, right? And upgrading and changing. So I wonder if uh, they will they're come changing, up with different features. They're changing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and they're testing all the time. So I'm a tester. And so um, I get notified probably every two days to test a new version and to see how things are going. And I'm still using it with my class. So um, just because school's out doesn't mean that I've stopped because, you know, like you said earlier, we're still working. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, what, what are you doing with your class? Just curious well, to know. On Class Dojo, it's now it's just announcements. So I remind them that on Mondays the food pantry is open and that they can go pick up food. And I remind them that if buses are coming, and um, I sent a um, a Father's Day announcement. So let me. I know, and and here I go say again. You know, I don't see any other job that people are on vacation and are thinking right. about communicating and and uh, you know and working. I I, I just love teachers. <laughs> I, I may say so myself. Click really quick here. Okay, so this is this is my class. So I had to click fast so you didn't see names. But um, <laughs> so this is this is what my live class dojo feed for class stories looks like. And this is what I use the most. I also use it primarily on my phone. Um, I find it's a lot easier to, to load pictures from my phone because I take pictures with my phone and I it's just easier for me. I don't store a lot of pictures on my computer. It doesn't pull from Google Photos. So um, I use my phone. And but, you know, she uses her phone. She's answering and saying okay. that it's phone. Okay. So um, so her question was on class story when she's using doing a picture. Yeah, she said she couldn't edit text on class story if I posted a slide above. Any suggestions? By slide above, I'm not sure if uh, was a picture or. But okay, so um, I am going to stop sharing my screen for just a second then. And here, hi, now I can see all of you. Um, okay, so I don't know, this is gonna be kind of weird, but um, so Ms. Pradell, so here is my class store, oh, whoa. Here's my <laughs> class, I don't know how to do it backwards, that's so funny. There we go, there we go. Um, here's my class story, okay? And so when I want to load um, a post, I Click on what's happening first, and then at the bottom, it gives me the choices of text, photo, or video. Uh, we're not seeing and, anything right now, Deborah. It's just like a mirror image, or something. right. But there's words right here at the bottom that say oh. text, photo, or video. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if I click on the pictures, because that's what you wanted, you had slides. It takes me to my photos on my phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if I pick a picture. And then I say select, then it puts up the picture. Mm -hmm. There we go. And underneath it, it says add caption. So you still should be able to add text underneath. And then you should be able to add a caption right there and add your words and then click post. And then after it's posted, could, could this text be changed? Because I'm not sure if that's the question. No. So at least I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um, well, we can we can try. Let's see, because I have pictures posted. So let's. If I share my screen again, and I go back over here. Okay. So this is what I had posted on Monday that our food pantry. Oh, sorry, is I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to put the screen up. I'm sorry. That's my fault. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm the only one watching the screen. Okay, <laughs> okay so um, let's see. I put up a Father's Day picture, uh -huh. um, and it'll let me edit, and it'll let me type right here at the top.
So it doesn't say it, but I knew that my cursor was blinking. So that's how I know that you can um, do that. And then now the text is there. Um, if I want to edit just words, it'll let me change whatever words. It'll let me add a picture or add a file to that post and save the changes. Hmm. It's interesting because you say that you did all that, but then I could not not edit. Hmm. Is, um, you is might just want to make sure that you have the, the app is updated. And um, sometimes it doesn't. You can't tell unless you go to the app store and and bring up the class dojo app like type in class dojo um knowing you already have it um at the at the top of your if you go into the app store and you type in class dojo if you have this little cloud it, that means you already have it on your phone but it'll say update in blue if you don't have the updated version of the app, and then you can directly update it from there. So um, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that might be the only thing. Also, if you ever have a question and need support for Class Dojo, um, their address is hello at classdojo.com. Hmm. Pretty simple. So, um, and then somebody who gets back to you super fast. They are just really great um, within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and again, Deborah is not representing the program. She doesn't sell <laughs> anything about it. She's a teacher like us trying to show us and some some uh, apps and information. And uh, Miss um, Predell said, "Good idea. Thanks." Okay, welcome. I'm glad it. Uh, um, I just use it for communication. Um, the, the portfolio, now that we're in distance learning, might be something new that, um, that I'm going to want to try this year. Um, and now that we're all computered up and ready to go. But um, I use it more to communicate with parents as just kind of just one extra little thing to keep them in the loop. So don't forget, tomorrow is crazy hair day or... Um, it's pride. It's you know. It's school pride week, and we're dressing in our school colors on Monday. Or um, we're going to have a guest speaker on Tuesday. Please make sure that your child is on time for the Zoom meeting. Um, mm. That's. Did you ever put like videos you want them to watch on the class story, or like uh, like uh, links to to to? Videos? I did. I did put a lot of links. Um, I put YouTube videos. Um, there's uh, some great art videos, and those were usually the ones that I posted. I didn't post things that I was going to need to grade, um, but I did offer it as an option for turning work in. I had a lot of families that were having trouble with Google Classroom, and so I said, then just take a picture and post it, send it to me in a message on Class Dojo, and, um, and then I'll get it and give credit. So um, parents were able to take pictures of their kids' work and send it to me through Class Dojo, and that just gave them one other avenue to be able to turn it in. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to work pretty well. Um, but um, yeah, I just... <clears throat> yeah, my, just, my experience with it, I, I just, like I said, I, I hooked up like towards the end of the year, trying to find a way to communicate with parents on the next year without mm -hmm. having my text on my phone, which was the way I was communicating which by the way, it was really good. <laughs> I must say, it was pretty effective and great. But I, I don't know, I just, you know, in order to be more professional, I think I had, I need to get an app like that. But I did post, um, I had something, I post a video where I was doing some uh, coloring with um, water art. And I, mm -hmm. I, was, I I did the video myself with my puppet and da, 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 and post, I said, okay, now post a picture of your water art. I wanted them to take a photo and show it to me. I did not have any response, even though I had, you know, a lot of parents sign in. And then I only had one uh, student that, and then at the very beginning, I said, oh, send me a picture just so we're, because we're testing this program. I was explaining to them that I was new to it and I was trying to test for next year. My parents were so supportive. They were amazing. But then I only got a, maybe two or three pieces of work. And it's so cute when it comes on the screen, that little, you know, they were coloring and da, 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 and then I got the picture and, and then one parent also sent me a, a video of of, um, of the daughter doing some of the activities, like doing some of my 
activities and writing her name and da da da. You know, they're little and they were and she was doing amazing. And and I mean, I, I just cry every time I'm like looking at this video. So <laughs> cute, and I thought it was nice, but that was all um, my the experiences I, I had and that people really did not respond as much as I expected to, maybe because it was the end of the year, we were doing Zoom every day, they were showing me things on Zoom, so we're like, how many times do you need to see my stuff? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know if that was the problem, but it, I was a little yeah. bit sad about like, okay, this is not really going, am I missing something that I'm not putting on? And then another thing I put on, I, I make the classroom, don't know, those Bitmoji classrooms, you familiar with that? That the child clicks on something and then it takes them on a read aloud or something. So I made my own Bitmoji classroom with some books and I put it mm -hmm. there, but it doesn't show the classroom itself. It's just a link. Is yeah. That how it is, right? So I don't know if it was as attractive as if they were able to see the classroom and get all excited. Oh, look, it's Miss Corn's classroom. Let me click on stuff. Whatever. So it was just show the link. And then uh, some people did put a like a little heart, but not everybody again. So I'm like, okay. Right. So it wasn't so effective for me so far. So I was like, maybe I'm not doing it right or there's something else, but I can see that. Um, I do like, it shows you how many people have viewed it. So mm -hmm. um, that's more important to me than if they've liked it because I have a lot of people who view it and don't necessarily click the like button. So um, <clears throat> that's one thing that, that I do look at is how many kids have, or how many parents have accessed what I've sent. And here is uh, Tracy Seals. Hi, Tracy Seals. She said, I, I use the portfolio. I just came in. You share about the attendance feature. Yeah, we did share about the attendance feature at the, um, at the beginning of, uh, of the presentation. You'll be, you'll be able to um, see it on playback if you want to mm -hmm. share. And I thought it was kind of cute for Zoom, especially with little kids to get them coming at a certain time and okay, I'm only gonna take this attendance the first five minutes. So if they want to see that little monster getting from red to green, they need to be there or something like that. I might use that that way. So is there any more features? Cause I, I hope I didn't. Uh, well, I think that there are, but um, in the essence of start small and have fun, mm -hmm. um, when you're learning new technology, it can be overwhelming. And so start small. Think about little ways that you can integrate it. You don't have to be an expert the first day you try it. Um, try technology with a children's mindset and just go in and play. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you don't you don't have to have it go anywhere. I when I first set up my classroom years ago, um, I included I made myself as a student in my class and hooked up my personal account as my um, child's parent. Mm -hmm. So that I could send messages and I could look and see um, kind of how that how that would work. Um, but one last thing is that uh, and I'm going to share my screen again. Yeah. 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 And, and people on the chat, if you have any more questions or if you have suggestions, if you use it in a certain way, would like to come up and tell us because, you know, this is teamwork again. We're working together, learning from each other and all that. So feel free to. Um, if you have something to add to the class dojo. Um. Okay, again, I'm in my live class. Is it just you watching or did you share me out? Yes, we're watching the, okay. the chair. And okay, so, uh, Deborah, just a second before uh, you do it, I just, uh, there is, uh, Trace is asking something. I don't want to forget, sometimes my, my chat goes up. So okay. just, just, we, we can address now or in a little bit. She's asking, she said, I got an email about worksheets coming soon. Do you know anything about that? Um, I don't know anything about worksheets except that they're coming. I have signed up to be a beta tester. So um, as soon as they start launching that, they'll let you know. But when you sign up for Quest Dojo, you'll see um, that you can sign up to be a beta tester as well if that's something you're interested in. So oh, under no. that worksheet part, and then you get to play with it before other people get it. So cool. Um, okay. This is my live account, but when I Click, um, if you click here, it'll take you to kids, but this is your launch pad. So <clears throat> what this tells me is that this is my school and how many teachers are signed up. And then under that, it says popular teacher resources. Really important. So today, the, the presentation that we were going through is down here under PD resources. Um, this refer a teacher is that you can send out a message 
two teachers so at your school so you just enter their email addresses you separate them by commas and you can take care of that um and i don't think you get anything for it but you know whatever and then they have resources for remote learning they have a class decoration pack so they have a whole file you see i was looking at it earlier um they have a whole file that they have on here that has class dojo themed stuff so if i click on class jobs oh there um they have all their little monsters on all kinds of stuff because that's a really big thing so they oh, um, you can cut and use it in your in your physical classroom yes right? mm -hmm. um, they have an introduction video that you can play for kids to show them kind of what class dojo does and what it's for they also have a back to school night show parents how to stay connected so this is a really good one and maybe um maybe there will be a back to school zoom kind of thing and then um this presentation um it is in english and i don't know if it comes in other languages but it is just a it's just a slide show thing. It's not even really a video. It's just you walk them through um, things and say, you know, as a teacher, I'm going to post announcements, updates, reminders. I'm going to share photos and videos. I'm going to send private messages. But students will share their classwork. Only family members will be able to view their work. And families can comment on videos or photos and leave encouraging feedback. Um, Families can leave feedback, which is really cool. Um, in portfolios, they can send a message that says, oh, this is really neat, great job. And that's kind of a fun thing too. So um, that is something. And then the big idea videos were the ones that um, we looked at just a minute ago. And if you wanna view all teacher resources, you click on that and it takes you to an entire teacher resource page for all of your questions and things so um all kinds of stuff a uh, quick this download pdf this tips to getting started is one of the things we're going to put in the comment box so mm -hmm. uh, yeah we definitely will. and then uh, there is another comment here deborah of miss Bradell said accountability for teachers using portfolios because students posts remain in pending mode until teachers respond so some parents wait and expect comments. That's right. See, that's the thing that you know, I mean, you have to know how much you can do because if you spread yourself thin on a lot of apps and parents are expecting feedback and you're not giving, they, it, it's going to mean it might mm -hmm. look bad, like, oh, this teacher is not on top of everything. So you only can bite as much as you can chew because it could backfire into, you know, you started super strong and now you're, <laughs> you're falling right the wagons you know so absolutely to, so you know maybe you don't launch portfolios right away maybe you wait and um in in the first year i would not have done portfolios i would have um it, that would just have been too much so remember you just do what you can mm -hmm. um, and what you're comfortable with because that that always comes through so um you do have Hollywood now teaches, used to teach kindergarten, now teach middle school. Wow. Yeah, that's a big jump, like Tracy said. <laughs> yes, it was. More power to you. Yes, big, big jump. Um, one of the cool things, though, for middle school is that when students have their own accounts and you do the student login, they can change their monster. So they don't have to stick with the one that was assigned to them. Um, they, they do have the ability when they sign up to change their monster. And so that's kind of a fun thing. Um, sometimes people think that um, that uh, middle schoolers don't like the little cartoony monster, but I find that sometimes they still like that and it gives them a little control over what their monster looks like, so. Well, that's cute. That's, that's cute. A lot. I think it's, uh, you know, just creates personality and gives them you know, that special touch of, you know, being special, creating something on, on their own. Mm -hmm. So anybody in the chat, any more comments or things the way you used it, or this is your chance <laughs> <laughs> to, um, well, while you guys are thinking about it, I really want to thank Deborah 
so much mm -hmm. for doing this again, you know what I mean? That, you know, she's just a teacher working on her vacation and coming to a live stream on her vacation for not nothing more than just being able to help somebody, in this case, helping me a lot because I had a lot of questions about this program. I still have questions about all the other <laughs> because every moment I turn around, here comes, you know, there's Google Classroom, there's Seesaw, there's, you know, Rosie something. And I'm like, what is all this? You know what I mean? So I still have a lot of... Uh, homework to do before I even get ready to think which one am I going to use. <laughs> so this is a lot. And um, so Deborah, tomorrow you still up to doing the Google, uh, Google Classroom. Class. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a hip hip hooray. That's what we used to do in my class. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip, hip, hooray. And the kids love that. And, um, and this was amazing. And um, and Trace is just talking to Hollywood uh, Rabbi right now. And anybody else with any final comments on Class Dojo? If not, it's okay. Tomorrow we'll, we'll be seeing uh, Deborah again at 10 o'clock. We'll talk about um, Google Classroom and learn some more features. And then we'll decide, you know, which one would be the best one. Uh, okay, here's Tracy. Here's a... To say, yeah, <laughs> Google Classroom, all right, <laughs> tomorrow at 10, it's a date. <laughs> Here. And I do I do think that the updates with, with Class Dojo, they're really trying to make that a platform for people to do work in as well. Um, for me, I don't think it will ever be the spot that I go to to send work um, out. It's a great place to showcase work. Um, but I don't know if, if I would be able to use it as far as being the, my only area. but you know, maybe at younger grades, that's something that you would be able to do um, a little bit easier and to kind of help centralize that. Um, but for me, I definitely need a little bit bigger platform, and that's Google Classroom and some other tools. But uh -huh. yeah, because you mentioned that you don't have Schoology, right? Over here at oh. LUS, <clears throat> Schoology is the big thing, and they were even thinking that the younger grades should be doing Schoology. But what I hear from other the teachers is that for younger grades is, it is not as friendly so i don't know and i also gonna have to tap on somebody that knows schoology <laughs> to maybe come <laughs> to that's not me sorry <laughs> see you got a hook on that one <laughs> but maybe you can come and watch maybe you like <laughs> you're gonna promote in your district i don't know anyway this is the teamwork that makes the dream work mm -hmm. i'm really happy that you're here so for the interest of time and uh, not to, you know, <laughs> monopolize you the whole day and afternoon, even though I would love to just stay talking to you forever. But um, I really want to thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. You kind of thing. <laughs> and um, I mean, wait, Tracy's saying one more thing before we go here. She's saying, I use, I use Clever, but working on my Schoology skills. Yes, Clever, I think it's, you know, kind of compiles a lot of the apps and then there's Schoology. Um, so our district, I just approved class wow. as far as I understand. So mm -hmm. how it goes. Yes. But it's good that we know different programs and we'll make a choice. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye from here. Anything else you'd like to, to say, Deborah, before we? No, don't get overwhelmed. Start small, have fun. That's good. That's a great, um, that's really great, great um, advice. You know what I mean? To really take your time. So I'm going to say bye to Deborah. Bye. Uh, thank you so much again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Can't wait. Okay, see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, guys. So this ends our broadcast again. Thank you so much, Deborah. Somebody on their vacation, just trying to help teachers, help me. It's helped me a lot. And um, and we'll continue doing some more uh, broadcasts to, of tools, of different things. If anybody's interested in um, talking about different things, I already said before, my channel is like Rec Room. We have a topic. We'd like to bring it here. We can discuss. You can talk about it. I'll be more than happy to to have you do that. And um, And that's it. And uh, uh, Miss Predell was saying that Class Dojo is great for kinder, pre-K, and pals. Yes. I think the little kids also like it a lot. And um, Deborah's using with fifth grade. So I guess it can be used in 
um, you know, uh, the lower grades up to fifth. I think that will be appropriate and fun. All right, guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate. And um, I'll see you later. Thank you, everybody that was on the chat. I'm sorry if I missed somebody or missed any comments or didn't say hello. I will apologize for that. But thank you so much for being here. It meant a lot to me. Bye-bye.